following program is for training purposes in TV news education. Some copyrighted material is used and is credited on screen. However, no more was taken than was necessary to tell the story of the event. YBA claims fair use of materials. Hello everyone, welcome to the special Super Bowl Sunday edition of K-Sports Sunday. I'm your host, Jason. Here joining me today, we have Aman and Dylan and a very special guest, BC color commentator for the radio, Peter Cronin. Uh, also had two Super Bowl appearances, uh, one win and one loss, both with the Washington Redskins. So we've got the Super Bowl, break it all down, Red, uh, Ravens and 49ers, and we'll also talk some college basketball and the NBA, the Celtics, uh, losing two key players in the middle of the season. So I'm going to start off with the reasons why the Ravens are going to win and the, ra and the reasons that the 49ers will win. I'm going to send it over to Dylan and Amon for that. Guys? Well, um, reason number one, the, the Ravens will win, Anquan Bolden um, has been dominating the, his, the cornerbacks as you saw last year, last week in the AFC Championship game, he totally destroyed the Patriots secondary. Just, he's bigger and stronger and just caught every ball that was thrown his way. And with um, the deep threats, Torrey Smith and Jacoby Jones, he's going to be in single coverage and Joe Flacco will have an easy, easy job throwing it to him or Jacoby Jones or Torrey Smith. So that's one, one major factor. Dylan? I think, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like Joe Flacco, his arm is just so amazing. He can throw deep balls very well. Jacoby Jones, he's, he's a good deep threat. Anquan Bolden, Torrey Smith, they have so many deep threats, you know? So if the Ravens can use those deep threats like to be good like and get big plays, but they're going to have to do it by big plays, I think, though, if they're going to like really win, they're going to have to get good like, big plays. Yeah, so uh, I'm joined, as I mentioned here, with... Uh, Peter Cronin, he's a uh, color analyst for BC Radio. Uh, he was a linebacker uh, with the Redskins as well as the Seahawks, and as I mentioned, had two, uh, two Super Bowls. And Colin Kaepernick, he's a very interesting quarterback. He can throw, but he's also very explosive uh, in the pocket. So from what you've seen, Peter, what do you think that Ravens defensive linebackers need to do to contain Colin Kaepernick? Well, we're very fortunate uh, as a broadcaster. We uh, with Boston College. Boston College actually played Nevada in a bowl game out in yeah, San Francisco a couple of years ago, and, and Ka Kaepernick was the quarterback. And we got to understand through studying uh, him in that 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 pistol scheme. Uh, really got to know what that whole thing was all about, and. And then saw it firsthand and saw this guy, uh, pretty impressive athlete. And the thing that, that, that is, I think is, is needs to be uh, considered with regard to Kaepernick is that the speed he has uh, in the, uh, when he gets out on the field, he just is a, an explosive runner. And when you're a defensive player, your first instinct after you identify where the ball's going is to identify or, or to establish a, 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 a pursuit angle. I mean, if, if you play the game, that is something that's worked on constantly, is taking the appropriate pursuit angle. And what happens with, uh, with, with, with Kaepernick is when players establish their pursuit angle, they're professional athletes. He's got a pretty good at this. It's not uncommon to see that they've taken a bad route to the ball because this guy has extra speed, extra gears. And... Uh, I noticed it uh, many, many years ago uh, when I was playing, John Riggins was, was our tailback, who was an inside power inside back, but he had the ability to change speeds with one step. And what happens when you change speed with one step is you create bad angles for the defenders, and proper tackling technique would, would put my, my head, my, hat, my, my upfield side of my body in front of the ball carrier. And when you have the ability to change speeds that quickly, the way uh, Kaepernick does, what happens then is just it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fraction of a difference. But what happens is when you get to the ball carrier, 
all of a sudden you can't get your head in front, your head's in back, and now you're tackling with an upfield arm, your arm tackling, he's such a good, uh, powerful runner, he runs out of arm tackles. I think that's something that, that is uh, critical to this, to this pistol offense, and having a guy with that type of skill, he doesn't have to throw the ball a lot, um, it really forces this, it's going to force this defense, this Baltimore defense, to play discipline in assignment football, which is very uncharacteristic for the National Football League. And they throw the ball as, as well as run the ball very effectively out of this scheme. And I think he, in this scheme, is going to be a big factor in this football game. Yeah, so we just went through some of the, reason, the top five reasons Baltimore should win and going to go through the top reasons why the 49ers will win and they have a very large offensive line. They ha have only given up 38 sacks on the year. Um, and also defensive end Justin Smith, uh, he's kind of been struggling, but uh, they're hoping perhaps he hasn't had a sack in five games. So San Francisco is hoping that he will step it up. Uh, and also tight end Vernon Davis has kind of been under the radar with Colin Kaepernick running the ball a lot more. Uh, so he could be a factor going up against some of those bigger uh, secondary players for the Baltimore Ravens. And the 49ers, uh, they play in a dome, so they, they feel more like they're at home than the Baltimore Ravens. And also Alex Smith, he is the backup quarterback, of course, but you never know because going up against uh, bigger uh, defensive backs, Colin Kaepernick, he... Injury is something you can't really control, so Alex Smith is going to have to prepare as if he's starting, which Jim Harbaugh has been focusing on this week. So now we're going to uh, go back and talk about the Ravens, so we're going to send it back over to Amon and Dylan. Uh, well, as you know, the Ravens and the 49ers are very very pr pr practically identical on both sides of the ball. I mean, you take a look at the offense, both have a solid running game, Frank Gore and Ray Rice, both over 1,000-yard rushers. Also, um, they got their, their wide receivers, Michael Crabtree for the 49ers and um, Torrey Smith, Jacoby Jones for the Ravens. But on defense, too, I mean, solid, solid defenses, great linebackers with um, Navarro Bowman and Patrick Willis for the Niners, and, of course, Ray Lewis and a storied career coming to an end this this week for the Ravens. So the m one major factor might be special teams. As you know, last year, um, two punt return fumbles killed the 49ers in the NFC Championship in a game they very well could have won. I mean, so little stuff here and there pl finishing off and will be the m big difference in this game. Dylan? I mean, like special teams, like Jacoby Jones also at Houston last year. Now he's with Baltimore, but he fumbled a punt too. So it's possible that the team both could fumble a punt. So if you do fumble a punt, yes, it is costly. And also both defenses have very talented players. The only thing, the Ravens have played a lot better in the playoffs defensively than in the regular season with the exception of the Broncos game. They didn't play great defensively, but they in the playoffs they've dominated defensively against the Patriots, only allowing 13 points, not allowing much to the Colts either, so the Ravens' defense has definitely improved now that Ray Lewis is back, so I think the Ravens' defense, if they're going to win, their defense needs to be able to contain Colin Kaepernick if they're going to win. Speaking of the defense, the Ravens' defense has been plagued by injuries this year. As you know, Ray Lewis with his torn triceps, the, um, the only starters who have maintained 16 starts have been Ladarius Webb and Ed Reed. And now they're back with a healthy defense, Haloni Nada, um, Darnell Webb, and Ray Lewis, as you know. So this is going to be a really healthy, solid defense for the Ravens in which they can really stuff the, the um, running game of the 49ers and force Kaepernick to pass. Of course, we know that he can pass. He's primarily known for his running abilities, but he threw four touchdowns against the Patriots. and. It really showed off his passing skills there. So it'll be interesting to see how the A, the Ravens go up against the 49ers run ability and if the if the 49ers can't run, how they're gonna stop the pass. 
Yeah, I think the Colin Kaepernick, yes, he can throw, but if I don't, if you just force him to like, drop back and throw, I don't know if he can really do it. I mean, throwing every down without running any, you know, I don't think that he can really do that. Throw the drop back and throw every single down, you know. But the running game, the thing is, even if Colin Kaepernick can't run, the good thing is he has Frank Gore with him. So Frank, so the defense has to worry about both Frank Gore and Colin Kaepernick. So that definitely makes it a lot harder in the Ravens. Yeah, not just Frank Gore and Colin Kaepernick, but an unsung hero, the Michael James. I mean, that the speedy guy just set him up for a screen, and he's gone. He's had lots of big plays that have gone unseen and not noticed for the 49ers, and he can also be a big part of the of the um, the game for the 49ers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Michael James. He's definitely got a lot of speed. I remember him at Oregon. He was just unstoppable you know his size is a concern so you have to get him out in space but he can definitely go once he's out in the open no one can really catch him yeah yeah and you brought up uh, special teams as well as Michael James and they have he was a running back at Oregon but they have been using him as a special teams returner and then you mentioned Kobe Jones he had uh, the 70 yard catch in the divisional round against the Broncos which ended up uh, tying the game with 30 seconds left and then Baltimore went on to win that game in overtime so I think it's definitely going to be a close hard-fought game and the Ravens are surrender surrendering about 123 rush yards per game and about 230 pass yards per games and so playing Colin Ka Kaepernick guy who can run and pass and you guys did bring up Frank Gore so I'm pretty so it could be high, higher scoring than most people than most people think. Yep. Um, Peter, you, obviously you've been in a Super Bowl, and there's so much drama, there's so much hype about it. What is your mindset going into a game like this? Uh, it's important that the coaches focus on this. Uh, it's important to try to keep as much normalcy as possible. It, it's, it's, it, 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 the game is all about routine. About doing the same thing, familiar in, uh, environment, uh, very consistent mm -hmm. in your preparation. Of course, you prepare intellectually, emotionally, physically, spiritually for for the contest. And uh, the, there is a tremendous um, disruption that occurs in, in, in the playoffs in general. Mm -hmm. But this is a very unique uh, disruption in that you are actually taking your team and just picking the whole organization up and moving to a remote location. In this particular case, the location is New Orleans. So uh, in, the, in the two Super Bowls I played in, we uh, practiced at uh, the Rams training camp, mm -hmm. which was a converted junior high school out in California. And, uh, and then we also, then when we were in Tampa a year later, we, we, uh, we practiced at a high school stadium, and which was, which was and you think of the the type of uh, conditions or facilities that most teams have available to them to prepare intellectually, emotionally, physically, the training facilities, the weight room, the, the, uh, the training room, uh, the film rooms, just the, the, the ability to, to prepare yourself for the, for the football game and the familiarity and the comfort and ease at which it is to prepare. Now you just you pull people out of that environment. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's disruptive, as I mentioned. And then you layer on top of that all the attention that is, is being paid to mm -hmm. this game and everything that anybody does uh, under normal circumstances 99 percent of what occurs during the, the preparation week goes by the wayside it's unnoticed it's unspoken about but because we've got this this 24/ uh, 7 news cycle uh, there's this they're starving for information every minimal every small tiny thing that occurs becomes news. Mm -hmm. Uh, so again, an, another distraction. So the coaches have to go to, to extremes to try to allow the players to enjoy the experience, but also make sure that they understand it's business. This is a business trip, and the, the the end of the game is, or the end game is, to go out there and not lose. That's this one. Yeah. Uh, come in second. Nobody cares who comes in second in this football game. Uh, make sure you win the football game. But on the other hand, make sure you enjoy the experience. So it's it's a very difficult. Uh, uh, experience the balance, mm -hmm. and uh, the teams that do a better the better job of that generally position themselves to have a good day mm -hmm. uh, when the when the when the ball finally does get kicked off. And uh, of 